Hello, Toastmasters, distinguished guests. Good evening. I'm doing a brief chat on on laptop computers. We're all consumers out there. We're inundated with the ads and the different places. I look at the, across the audience here, and I see a very specific, sophisticated audience. <clears throat> but however, we might be able to reiterate some of the latest technology, computer gadgets that are out there, reinforce some of our uh, buying habits and where the market is at. Thank goodness it's kind of stabilized right now. I see a lot of that crazy growth in these little iPhones and I, uh, touches, and I just can't do any typing like this. <laughs> so, for most of us, after we're inundated with a number of uh, advertisements and different things, we might be finding ourselves on the market. We're going to start with some research on Google. It seems pretty uh, self-explanatory that we'd uh, be looking at the uh, market out there uh, and using the latest uh, internet technology. I point out Best Buy versus Amazon.com. You know, it's the box door versus the internet. We can certainly go and like to touch it, feel it, and see it in our hands before we make a buying pur purchase, and a lot of the consumers are doing that these days. We can certainly just easily type in an order onto Amazon or a number one of those uh, purchasing sites and have it shipped to us directly. There's benefits to both of them. However, I did read recently in a Wall Street Journal um, magazine article that Best Buy and the box stores are continuously getting hammered and hammered on price competition. iPhone applications are out there right now where people can go in and scan the device and get the best price in a 100 mile area, if not on the internet. So that's one thing that you can keep in mind. Once you've decided to compile in this research, you're going to be defining a budget. And defining a budget, you, on the typical, you know, person like myself, when I was going through this process, I was thinking $500 to $1,200 quite easily you could spend on a laptop computer. Now I define that PC and Apple, and in that process, you're going to really quickly define yourself as being a PC or Apple. <coughs> The Macintosh systems, to me, the G series, starts at $1,200. It's a Unix-based system, and it's pretty much hands-free. You've got a lot of software that you can go to work with right away. Of course, there's always software to get. But you can find a number of PC applications, a, a computer, Pentium 2, uh, in the $500 range. It's kind of like the base model. So when I'm making this process, I define myself as a PC. I'm etched. <laughs> the first thing you'll discover when you identify a PC is that it's going to come with a home premium. Home 7 is the uh, operating system that they're at. There's Professional and Ultima. The predecessors is Vista and XP. XP was a good uh, operating system that we we're all accustomed to. Uh, we went through the little hump where Vista just was a slow, uh, bloated, uh, dog of an operating system, and they've really <laughs> finally detuned into a Windows 7, which has been out for a little while. Your system's going to most likely come with home premium, but if you are a professional business person and you have to, like, you know, have a stack full of XP software, you might consider a, a professional upgrade um, to allow you to switch back and forth to XP processing, or maybe more of the networking capabilities on the very high end Ultima operating system. However, I found that the home premium version uh, did everything that I needed it to take care of, and if I needed a new software programs or solutions, I was prepared to pick those up. So after I figured out those, and I'm going to define myself as an HP, oh, I'm sorry, define myself as a PC, and I'm looking at the right operating system, I'm going to be inundated with brands. Here's a few that are out there that are, you know, might be recognized brand names. We can identify the HP huge line of Hewlett Packard. It still might, but when you're defining your brand, you kind of start defining who you are too when you define your PC. The HP to me really screams business person. Sony, a lot of the Sony products have more musical elements or software capabilities that, that kind of feel in that music element. Dell. Dell is a major, con, uh, major contributor on the internet, of course. However, I understood them to be very proprietary. Even getting a new 
extension cable to the laptop computer might not work with your um, other things. And everything has to be proprietary. ASUS is known for their motherboards as well as the other computers that are out there. You're really going to define a processor, Steve, between Intel and AMD. I find those two processor chips uh, very good and reliable, and they both have their name to them. Of course, being here in the forest, Silicon Forest, Intel came to mind, and they have a new hyper-threading system of i3s, i5, i7s. If you're a person that uh, needs to do gaming or extensive, intensive graphics, or wants to run the TV set as well as uh, burn a CD at the same time, you might look at these more higher-end chips. But when you're really discussing a, a laptop, something that's portable, easy to go, possibly do some business applications, an i3 or an i5 is going to get the job done. Keeping in mind functional obsolescence is that the investment that you pay for today with technology, as you know, it's going to run out pretty soon. Mm. Next, you'll define the memory. The random access memory is 3 gigabytes to 8 gigabytes. Again, this is a broad range, but something in between, again, unless you, most systems are going to work fine with 4, and you only really need 4 with that home premium uh, operating system, Getting much above four and stuff, you're really, again, looking at doing advanced applications and spending a lot of money on stuff that you might not ever need or use. The hard drive itself, too, can go anywhere from 300 gigabytes up to a terabyte. <laughs> if you need a picture of everybody in your family and in Portland, a terabyte is exactly what you need. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly is that design. When it comes down to your personalized computer, a keyboard, are you going to get a standard keyboard or a full size with a 10 key on it? If you do get that 10 key, you know you're off-centered in a sense. So you're not really you're off-centered. It depends on the portability that you want. Blu-ray players, high definition, these different things. Fingerprint reader so it can have all your uh, password protection with a fingerprint or even a card reader. These are ad added peripherals that you can definitely have in mind. Keeping in mind, after you've purchased a, C a, a PC, you're going to have to look at software pick up that Microsoft Office, or go uh, open, source, open Office Source, which is free off the internet, and you'll also have to pick up uh, some antivirus protection if you're surfing the internet. Last, the insurance with a question mark. I did buy an HP many years ago, and it worked out just fine for me. I even went to the Peace Corps with it. So I never got insurance on the product, and I don't really advise getting insurance, but if you're a trouble pwn, you'll get that. Recently, I picked up an, an Asus laptop. It's got thin design, it's got the ports that I need, and it's lightweight with an extra excellent battery life. Those are really the important things to me in shopping for a PC. I hope some of it brought home to you, and if uh, some of it makes sense, <coughs> good luck out there in the shopping market. <laughs>